Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk. I am Cody. He is Andy. We are the Tech Talk crew coming to you live on the 20th of March, 2024. Andy, how are you doing? You know what, Cody? If I was any better, I'd be you. That's what I like to hear, my friend. Or Paige's cat. I don't know. One of the two. Did you get there a cat, you by the way? No. An no, orange I, cat, by the way. I will. I, I can promise you, I can promise you, I will never own a cat by choice. <laughs> so, I, you're say, so you're saying there's a chance. So like, you're saying the only way that I've physically thought about this in my future is if like I get married and she has a cat and it's either me or the cat that has to go. I may pick me. I just don't like, I don't like hair, right? I don't like hair. I, I can like tell. Hair, right? <laughs> I, can I don't tell. like hair. Hair gets everywhere. I'm not a cat person. They're meowing. They're crawling. They're hissing. Don't well, like wait a minute. Cats, so I, no, aren't like, there cats that don't really shed? I mean, we could have like a cat discussion if you want. I'm not here to offend anybody. If I do, I apologize. And it is what it is. But I'm just not a cat person. I just I've never been. Can't do it. Fair enough. Dogs. So you're like you're more likely to get an actual like silverware set before yeah. getting a cat. Like, give me a fish with an automatic fish feeder and I'll be okay. It's the only pet I'm looking for. All right. We know what to get Cody for Christmas here. Merry Fair Christmas. enough. Speaking but, of Christmas, should we look at some charts? Speaking of Christmas, we have two, two requests out of the four charts today. Count them. Two requests out of the four. First one, yeah, Wisco Phil, Euro currency. Shout out Wisco Phil. Shout out to Wisco Phil. Thanks for the request. This one's really interesting. Yeah. So... Obviously, we want to look at currency risk and the way these relationships with respect to the U.S. dollar because of that's a big component in exports. You know, the higher our currencies go, like if the euro continues to go higher, they can convert more of those into dollars and buy more of our stuff. Is that right? Am I thinking about that, is, that right? I, I believe that's how Brian Rice taught me when I got here. Correct. Got it. Okay, cool. So, you know, ipso facto, if this thing starts running more, you know, we've talked about like fundamentally one of the things missing, seems like it's missing from the spot cheese market or just not spot cheese market, but just cheese in general has been exports. And so it's like, okay, it's like so, their, their value spend, right? The higher the euro, the more bang for the buck per se. It's basically the way I see it. So, it. and to your point, that's what Mr. Rice taught you. Yeah. Okay, so looking at the chart, I think what we are trying to do is establish a new upward trend. And it's doing a pretty good job of it, if you ask me. We have this longer term, very long term uptrend that I started with here, but you really retraced a significant portion of this rally. I think you can safely say that any sort of like a big like upward trend that started like maybe here was broken. Right. Right. And so to retrace almost all of that, it's almost like this actually kind of reminds me of the way the spot cheese market looks. And actually, let's take a quick peek at that. So it had this big break, you know, here had this big break and has since trying to climb out of it. I'd say the euro kind of looks somewhat similar. What's interesting here is this 109 number. So let's take a little peek. Bam, right there. 109 and some change. Looks like the past two days, we've had a lot of support at 109. And yeah. after you created that, you, you know, it looks like you filled the M going into 2024, that M-ish kind of formation there. And now, like you said, it kind of broken out. What do you think the next portion of this trade is. So I got rid of those two lines. I think you have to focus on the fact that we had this big downtrend. We broke out of it. We got to this, we cleared 109 and are trying to retrace that. And they're obviously showing signs of support there. Right. And so to me, like a nice healthy uptrend would be, you know, call this like the first attempt at a new low right here and rejecting it. If this becomes a second attempt at a new low, you know, the next step would be, can we clear what was clearly resistance to? Because if you look at this like 110 area, I mean, look at how much the market accelerated lower once we broke through it. I mean, let's just go back real fast over here. You had a ton of choppy trade. And then once you broke through it, we never looked back, right? So it tells you something about that 110 number, right? And to me, it's like, okay, that type of price, I think, becomes a magnet, right? And so if we can hold here and then retest this 110 and, and climb through that price, we haven't settled over 110 since, and what is this? This is Jan 12. I guess my like long-winded answer is that you have a clear break out of a downtrend. You have a, an attempt to put in a higher low. That's a positive sign. The next step would be, can you clear 110? If you can, then I think you got to start looking at numbers like these types of you know price points where the market really broke down from here. And I would also say, look at that. Is that a coincidence? 111, 109, 110, 112. Look at these even numbers, man. Yeah. 
Okay. Putting in a higher low, finding support here. If we can continue to consolidate, then I think the next step is testing this 110. If you can break through that, I think 111 becomes a magnet. You almost have to round yourself off of the 109 number in the next couple yeah. trading sessions and then pop back up to 110. Yeah. But again, this is showing signs of a potential for a nice healthy uptrend. You know, you go back to some of these like bigger types of moves. They're just not sustainable. This isn't sustainable price action. You want to see a nice trend. You need setbacks. You need small retracements. So as long as you keep making these higher lows, though, let's keep going. Let's go, Phil. Appreciate the uh, appreciate the request. He said quite a bit on here. We we definitely appreciate it. He's getting up there with the, the long time list, long time listener. Maybe he'll be a caller someday. Who knows? Maybe we sh- you know what we should do. We should start allowing people to call in like live. Wow, that'd be awesome. Wouldn't that be cool. That'd be Wouldn't cool. That'd be neat. Just like call in live. Like, what do you think of you know? We don't agree with this one ten price and just have a conversation. I don't know. Tech talk. Let's call. go, call in. All right, cool. Next one. Next. Another another request. Another one. This is Coco. Coco. This came at request three hours ago. So this one's like hot. It's like, it's fresh. It's fresh. Three hours ago, we got this request from none other than Comrade Nelson. All right. Comrade, Comrade Nelson asked for a Coco chart. We're giving it to him. Let's go. Here we go. What do you think about this chart that's straight up? I, I, I mean, this is what's really interesting here is that I think this is a great example. First of all, we've talked about ascending triangles before. Yep. I think this is a great example of one, right? It didn't come all the way and then take off, but yeah. you had an attempt to break down a higher low, kept bump, and it bumped up against this area where, where it broke down from. Right. And once it broke through there, it really accelerated. So this is a great example of an ascending triangle. You see these more often where, again, you, you have like a continuation of a trend, right? These usually don't start trends, but they tend to be more of a continuation. But the question that was posed to me is, should we be expecting a pullback? If so, what kind of price point should we be looking at? It's tough to say you're going to get a pullback after this candle. I mean, this completely engulfs that candle. This is going to be an outside day, right? Where it's like you completely engulf the previous day's range, right? I mean, just a monster candle today. So if you just look at it too, like yesterday's session, not looking, you'd be a little cautious, right? Right. But then bam, just like- You engulfed it and created a new high. Because what did we settle at? 7,000? Right. This is a new high close. Yeah. If you get an open higher tomorrow, I mean, it's just, this is going to be rocking. I guess for me, it's like, you know, do you look for pullbacks to buy? I'm sure that would be for those that are looking to buy, it would be great. But it's like, right. if you get an open higher tomorrow, I think you have to close your eyes and buy it at that point. I know it's tough buying like a new contract high, but it, one gentleman in the milk pit put it to me really well one time. You're into new contract highs for a reason. You know, like that to me, when I look at this chart, today's candle, new contract high, totally engulfed the previous day's range. You open high tomorrow, I think you got to close your eyes and buy it. Flip side is, you know, where does I think the next major area of support come in? It's this, it's where you broke out from in this ascending triangle. So then it, it begs the question do you wait to try to get down to 6,000 or like you said, do you buy it on new contract highs just to be safe? You know, and if you need to get something bought, you have it bought. I think you have to consider buying it here. Okay. I really do. Like, especially if you get an open higher tomorrow, right? Solidify yeah. this close by getting an open higher tomorrow. That's, I mean, that's strong like bull. That'd be nasty. Yeah. Because, you know, it's all about perspective. You go back and look at this chart here when it broke out. Well, it's already it's already rallied so much. You know, do you want to own it? Well, that was the right decision at the time to buy into new contract highs. So I, I think you have to kind of step back from the idea that this is new contract highs, but just looking at the chart, it's like you have this big rally from six thousand, seven thousand. I don't even know if I'm quoting that right, but this was the best they could do was yesterday's session that could completely punch in this. So okay. look out. I don't know. Are you going to be able to hand out chocolate this year for Halloween? It's getting pretty expensive. we got a few months left, but you might want to hedge yourself just to be overly cautious. You might want to hedge yourself. You're probably going to be handing out candy apples this year or something like that. We're going to have to. <laughs> we know you're not going to be handing out any cat food. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know. Maybe you should oh. co-volunteer at like the cat center or something like that. Or you just get, get, get a chance to hang out with some cats, see how it is. <sighs> I'd rather play in traffic, to be completely honest. <laughs> that's, that's, so, <laughs> go so we'll, many we'll, leave, we'll leave that one be and we'll jump onto our next chart. All right. I love animals. I love, them, love them, but sure, not yeah, it. Sure, it sure sounds like it. <laughs> next chart, then. May corn just settled unchanged. Just settled unchanged. Now, ascending triangle in May. I don't know if I'd agree with that. It was, well. That's how I have it drawn. So I, I was going both ways. I was, is it a. Right here, I think you can make flag, that. Right? Or is it, a, is it an ascending triangle? I think it's more of a pennant where you have 
you know, you're getting convergence, aren't you? Right. If you want to draw it from the breakout, this is a prelude to volatility though. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to disagree with you on the, on the idea that it's an ascending triangle, but I think either way, I mean, we're, we're both kind of looking at the same thing. It's, it's, it's like a prelude to volatility for me. The first thing I thought of when I, when I looked at this chart was this formation, if it breaks out, this could go, you've already had a significant amount of weakness that really hasn't been tested that much either. I mean, when you think about like, you know, this break from five bucks, basically down to pretty close to four, right? I mean, when was there really a material test to the upside during any of this? There really wasn't. No. After you broke five dollars down to four eighty, then it just kind of, you know, collapsed on top of itself and we promptly yeah. went down to four fifteen. Yeah. And now you're starting to get to a price point where it's kind of like I think about this like sixteen dollar milk. Are you gonna get new sellers here after a significant break? April milk went from like eighteen to sixteen bucks. Are we going to get new sellers looking to get short, make corn, call it around this 440, 420 area after breaking from, you know, wherever you want to draw it from, five bucks down to 420. Right. That's, I mean, I feel like that's a tough ask. I have the 20 day moving average. This is an exponential moving average, but I have this 20 day average. And you're, you're starting to, I mean, see some support around that price. And me, I think that's one thing to be mindful of, but I think this pennant could get nasty. So you had another day or two of consolidation and then you broke out to the upside, especially look out. It, I think this is a market that could get explosive. I know it's not technical, but isn't there a WASD report coming up? Is it tomorrow? You're going to want to talk to Jimbo about Jim, that. I'll one. say, check out the grain feed with Jim. Check out the grain feed, Jimbo. He'll be talking about that a little bit more. He'll be talking about that one. I believe you are, you're correct. You're talking about getting some volatility in the market. And I think that next WASD report from what he was talking about on his previous show was mm -hmm. that is going to bring volatility to the grain sector. For sure. It should, right? I mean, I understand that that's, I mean, it's an important report. I don't want to discount its value. When I look at this formation, this is a prelude to volatility. If you get a breakout, it could get kind of nasty to the, down, to the upside here. Again, you haven't tested a lot of any of the shorts. You know, if there was any new sellers that have been selling corn over the last month are wrong. And like, if you have a breakout that can start to kind of add fuel to even more to that fire. So again, it kind of reminds me of selling April milk at 16 bucks. I mean, I, I get the cash markets, check out bases loaded, by the way, to learn more about that. April at 16 or close to it as a premium. It's not, I don't think it's that big of a premium. So are we going to get new sellers that get short at that price after a big break? I think corn is seeing the same thing. Let's be a little cautious here. I think I'd rather own it and sell it. I would agree with you on corn. All right. Hey, we're on the same page. Here we go. That? All right. So last one, but certainly not least, you butter. want to talk about July butter. Is that a new high? Sure, it looks like it to me. All right, just checking. Asking for a friend. Here's a good question that I had that I will relate <laughs> to you from a guy who actually asked about this chart. Oh, yeah? Okay. You know, he, he said, please, let's talk about butter, $3 butter, question mark. After today, what, six cents away? To your point, new high close. So this is not an ascending triangle. Of, it's just, they're kind of almost popping up everywhere. It's not quite this one because you had technically a lower low, right? Part of that too is sometimes you struggle with some illiquidity in butter and light volume days, but either way to bump up against this 290 area and then break through it as a breakout like that. And, and what's interesting too, is you have this, I mean, is this a breakaway gap? We'll see. You would have liked to have seen this day settle on its high. That said, I mean, it's what a penny off its high. Again, it's butter. It's going to be a little bit more liquid. So today's size 294 and a half settled at 293 and a half, penny off the high. Okay. It still broke out in the new contract highs. And really thinking out loud, it technically did that yesterday. Yes. And then followed through with a higher open and settled higher today. Correct. So that's a very strong sign that this market can continue. And it goes back to what we were looking at with cocoa. And you know, we can, we can certainly look at other markets as well that show the same type of thing. And it's like, I, I, just, I don't want to get lulled into the idea. It's like, well, it's already had a big rally. So that means it can't go up anymore. So it's like, well, it had a big rally here, didn't it? Well, and that's kind of the thing. I mean, since the beginning of February, we've gone from 285 to 290 back to two. I mean, we've just bounced around this five cent range in butter, which in butter is, is pretty big, as we all know. But yeah. we never had a breakout here or there. And then yesterday, as you mentioned, we finally broke out above 290. And yeah, this Kept it going. This market, it's like corn almost too. You've never really seen a big test of this of this uptrend. And again, I, just, I think about from a perspective, this was a big move. I know there wasn't probably any real material volume, but you still had a, a, a significant amount of price action. 20 cents a pound is a lot. It is. But then you look at it and say, well, we've already rallied a lot. And it's like, well, but we can keep going. So yeah, I, I think you got to be cautious here. The chart's certainly not giving you any reason to go get short. No. 
right? And just thinking out loud, yesterday, new high close. We always talk about if you get some sort of close like that, how does the next day's open respond? Today, it responded with an open higher and settled higher. So I guess flip side of that, if you basically retrace, let's say you, you fill this gap tomorrow and then settle below like 290, that would be a clear rejection of this breakout. So that would be the only reason I'd want to get short that. Yeah, I agree. It's not done. It's I would not want to get short unless we broke below 285, I think at this point, right? You start Damn. breaking through that long-term support that we've had. I think that would be a good telling indication. I'm going to go ahead and label that. Label that. 285. 285. All right. We'll just th- we'll just throw this in here too. And he's not getting a cat either. Now that we know Cody's an animal lover, I don't know any closing thoughts here. Well, I was gonna say thanks for your time on the show today, but uh, I, st- I still would like to say that you're actually gone next week, right? Vacation, um, spring break, kids, kindergarten, spring break. It's gonna kindergarten, be wild. spring break. So you're gone. You're out next week. I might try to get somebody on the show. Just kind of keep our momentum roll and see if there's anybody out there maybe jimbo maybe maybe i was i was just going to suggest jimbo we post wazi report we'll see how that that pen yeah. plays out get jimbo on here see if he's an animal lover like myself and keep the momentum rolling until you can get never. back and fill those shoes you never know i mean he could be i mean he could have his own zip Wouldn't that you, be never wild? Know, you never wasn't know that like a matt wasn't there like a matt damon movie out there where he like bought a zoo or something like that and like the whole family and like they decided to per- no I have no idea. Maybe All right. Well, until next time, we appreciate everyone watching. If you wouldn't mind, please punch that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Let's you know whenever Paige and our awesome team send out any content from Ever Ag. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you like us. Maybe you don't like us. I have no idea at this point. Um, and don't be afraid to write in and ask for some charts for Andy and I to look at. But until next time, Mr. Vacation will be gone next week, and I will have somebody else on with me. Have a good week, everybody.